Sometimes an endangered species can become so rare it seems like extinction is certain and there's no way to save it. But today on RZSS Goes Wild, we'll see that even when all seems to be lost, a well-managed captive breeding programme can offer hope for survival. Today, we're going to be checking out the story of wildcats in Scotland. The Royal Zoological Society of Scotland has a long history of working with wildcats, and wildcats themselves have a long history in the UK. If you'd been walking through the British countryside in springtime about 500 years ago, it's very likely that you would have heard this sound. This is the call of the wildcat, which was widespread through UK forests in the 1500s. Unfortunately, due to hunting and habitat loss, there are thought to be only around 100 of these amazing animals left in the wild, all in Scotland. Before we get into what's being done to save this species, let's take a look at what a wildcat actually is and how it's different from your moggy at home. At first glance, a wildcat might look like a domestic tabby, but a closer look reveals striking differences. The most obvious is the tail, which is much fatter than a domestic cat tail and has a rounded end and rings around it. Wildcats also have distinctive, typically unbroken stripes on their sides and a stripe along their back that ends at the base of their tail. The other difference, of course, is that these cats are wild. They are fierce, they can be aggressive and they are not interested in being cuddled by humans. Our conservation manager, David Barclay, has been working with wildcats for years and they certainly have a special place in his heart. The wildcats are a critical component of our wild landscapes and ecosystem. As a predator, it plays a critical role in helping obtain that balance between the predator and prey cycles. We also know that from an economic perspective, the wildlife tourism is a huge draw here in the Highlands and by having our iconic species like the wildcat back out there could be a huge boost to that economy and the local communities. If that's not enough to convince you, here is a collection of almost offensively cute pictures of wildcat kittens. With wildcats reduced to such low numbers, a new threat has emerged. One which until recently looked set to finish off this amazing species for good. A problem for wildcats is that they are closely related enough to domestic and feral cats to be able to breed with them and produce kittens. When wildcat numbers are very low, as they currently are in the UK, it's much more likely that they're going to encounter a domestic or feral cat than they are another wildcat, and so they end up breeding with these other cats instead. This hybridisation dilutes the important genetic variation that's unique to wildcats and that enables them to survive in their habitat. It also exposes them to diseases that are carried by domestic and feral cats that wildcats may not have immunity to. A recent genetic study by the RZSS Wild Genes team and their collaborators showed the extent of this problem. The team used genetic markers to look for wildcat DNA in different kinds of cats. The object was to be able to find cats that had mostly wildcat rather than domestic cat DNA. The genetic test used domestic cats as a baseline. The team then tested nearly 150 wild living cats that looked like wild cats sampled over the past two decades and found that actually the majority were genetic hybrids with a high percentage of domestic cat DNA. Finally, the team tested cats in the captive population of wild cats from zoos across the country and found that the majority of DNA in the majority of captive cats was wild cat DNA. All of a sudden, there was hope. There are wildcats across a host of zoos and collections all around the UK, and the majority of them have a very high percentage of wildcat DNA. So, captive wildcats in zoos across the UK could hold the key to saving wildcats, but only with a properly managed breeding programme. Now, as a coordinator of the wildcat breeding programme, it's my role to collaborate with holders and zoos and wildlife parks and private facilities across the UK 
The success that we've had with the Wildcat Breeding Programme is a true testament to the hard work and devotion of the Wildcat keepers and facilities all across the UK. I'm here at one of our Wildcat enclosures at the Highland Wildlife Park. You can just see one of the cats behind me. Um, this is our female Fian. She's one of a breeding pair that share this enclosure. So I've just put some food in for her. Some of it's hung up, some of it's up high. We try and make it a bit more challenging. Um, she's a, an example of how different some of our cats could be because actually she's quite cheeky, quite brave. Um, she'll often come towards me when I'm going in to feed and she's dead curious. In 2015, when RZSS took over the management of the Wildcat Breeding Programme, the breeding population was around 65 individuals. Now in 2020, we have a population of over 100 animals and even just last year in 2019 we had our best breeding season for this species with 24 kittens born in just the one year. But it doesn't stop there. RZSS Conservation and its partners are about to embark on a whole new phase of wildcat recovery. Now one exciting new project, Saving Wildcats, which will be undertaken across the next six years, will be the first recovery project for this species in the Highlands of Scotland. And here at the Highland Wildlife Park, we will be building a dedicated reintroduction centre where we can increase the population, train wildcats for release, so that in the not too distant future, we can release these cats back to the wild. It's a project that's going to involve several different partners, all working across different areas of this conservation effort. And it's a project that we're right at the start of, so please do watch this space for exciting developments as this ambitious and groundbreaking conservation effort takes off. You can help secure the future for wild cats in Scotland by following the link you can see here or above or below this video and donating whatever you can to wildcat conservation. In the next episode of Our ZSS Goes Wild, we're off to the Himalayas to meet a wolf that has especially evolved to be able to deal with high altitude and low oxygen. Get ready to take an exciting journey into Nepal's backcountry as we search for the Himalayan wolf. I will see you then.